Section 4 from Chapter 17, Catholics and Protestants. Counter-Reformation. In the 15 and 1600s, the Catholic Church set out to defeat Protestantism and convince people to return to the Church. This effort came to be called the Counter-Reformation. As you learned earlier, the Reformation was triggered by a series of bloody wars in Europe between Catholics and Protestant rulers. When the last wars ended in 1648, most of the Germanic people became Protestants, and most of Latin Europe, uh, or areas influenced by Roman culture, remained Catholic. The Catholic Church, Catholic Church waged a war against Prote Protestantism, but it knew it needed to reform itself. Paul, pope Paul III understood this need. After becoming Pope, Paul called a council at Trent near Rome. The council held meetings for 20 years from the 1540s to the 1560s. During those meetings, the Council of Trent worked to make the Catholics' belief clear. It also set up strict rules for how bishops and priests should behave. The Catholic clergy were told to work even harder at instructing people in faith. To train new priests, seminaries were created. A seminary is a special school for training and educating priests. In 1540, Pope Paul III took another important step. He recognized the new order of priests, a society of Jesus known as the Jesuits. Jesuits were the Pope's agents in Europe. They taught, preached, and fought heresy, religious beliefs that contradict what the church says is true. So heresy means anything that the, goes against what the church says is true. The man who founded the Jesuits was a Spaniard, Ignatius of Loyola. He was a daring soldier, but his life changed when he was wounded in battle. While recuperating, he read about the Christian saints who performed brave deeds to defend their faith. Ignatius decided that he would become a soldier for Jesus Christ. Religious Wars in France John Calvin was originally from France, and many French people came, became interested in his ideas. As Calvinism spread in France, French Protestants became known as Huguenots. Only about 7% of the French be people became Huguenots, but almost half of the French nobles did, including the Bourbon family. The Bourbons were the second most powerful family in France. They ruled a kingdom in southern France called Navarre and were in line for the throne of France. Many French nobles wanted to weaken the king. The Huguenots nobles especially wanted the king weak so that they could practice their religion freely. At the same time, France's king, Henry II, wanted to build a strong central government. France, oh, sorry, Henry died, Henry II died in 1559, and his young son, Francis II, died the following year. This meant that the Francis's brother, Charles, a 10-year-old boy who was, was now serving as king. Since Charles was too young, his mother ran the government for him. His mother was Catherine de' Medici the daughter of Lorenzo de' Medici, the powerful Italian ruler of uh, France. Catherine was determined to keep the French kingdom strong for her son. She believed the Huguenots were a threat to the king's power and refused to compromise with them. In a 1562 civil war that would last more than 30 years, uh, a, in 1562, a civil war that would last more than 30 years began in France between the Protestants and the Catholics. In 1589, Henry of Navarre, the leader of the Huguenot forces and the head of the Bourbon family, became King Henry IV of France. For the next few years, the war continued because the Catholic nobles would not accept a Protestant as king. Henry won, the most, Henry won most of the battles, but was unable to capture Paris. Henry IV then made a famous deal. He knew the French people were Catholic, and they demanded a Catholic king. Henry agreed to become a Catholic so that the French people would accept him as king. In 1593, Henry went to Paris and put on a white satin, put on white satin for a Catholic ceremony. As he passed through the church doors and smiled, according to tradition, said that Paris was worth a mass, which meant that it was worth becoming Catholic to rule France. Henry IV did not forget his Huguenot followers, however. He issued an edict, an order, while visiting the city of Nantes in 1598. The Edict of Nantes said that Catholicism was French's official religion, but it gave the Huguenots the right to worship freely. 
What was the Thirty Years' War? The worst religious war of, of the Reformation's era was fought in the Holy Roman Empire in the 1600s. It began in Bohemia, today known as the Czech Republic. Protestant nobles in Bohemia rebelled against the Catholic king. The other Protestant kings in Germany decided to help the rebels, and the war expanded throughout the empire. The war lasted 30 years, <coughs> from 1618 to 1648, and quickly became a war of kingdoms. France, Sweden, Denmark, England, and the Netherlands sent troops to help the Protestants, while Spain and the Holy Roman Empire backed the Catholics. Town fought against town, and roving troops murdered peasants on the roads. When it was over, only wolves were found wandering through some towns that used to be. The war weakened Spain and helped make France one of the most powerful, one of Europe's most powerful countries, the Reformation in Spain. The idea of Luther, the ideas of Luther and Calvin never became popular in Spain. Still, the Protestants began fight, when the Protestants began fighting in Europe, it affected Spain. Spanish rulers became suspicions, suspicious of Protestant countries or anyone in Spain who was not Catholic. When the when the Reformation began in the 1500s, Spain was a young nation. It had been founded in 1469 when <clears throat> Queen Ferdinand and Queen Isabella married and joined two kingdoms. The monarchs wanted a strong nation, and they felt all their subjects should be Catholic because it would keep Spain's citizens loyal and united. When Ferdinand and Isabella began to rule, many Muslims still lived in Spain. As you read earlier in the chapters, Muslims ruled Spain from about 700 AD to 1200. During those years, many people of different religions lived together in relative harmony. The Muslims had made non-Muslims pay special taxes and limited their rights, but they did not seek to kill or expel non-believers. Jews, for example, found life in Muslim Spain better than in other places in Europe. As you read in earlier chapters, Jews were persecuted throughout Europe during the Middle Ages. Muslim Spain during the Middle Ages was a golden age for Jewish thinkers and poets. The most famous Jewish scholar was Maimonides, who was born in Spain, and his books on religion and medicine earned him great respect. The Golden Age ended when Catholics uh, took control of Spain. Jews and Muslims were no longer welcome. In 1492, Isabella ordered all Jews and Muslims to convert to Catholicism or leave the country. To ensure religious unity, they also set up Spanish inquisitions to investigate people's belief. The Spanish Inquisition was a Catholic court similar to the one of the Catholic Church set up in Europe to, Europe to investigate heresy. The Spanish Inquisition was much crueler, however. Charges of heresy were made just to eliminate enemies. Horrible tortures were uh, invented to force confession of guilt. The head of the Spanish Inquisition, Thomas uh, de Torcumada, hmm, Torcumada, I think, anyway, uh, executed 2,000 Spaniards. Even the Pope in Rome could not stop him. The English Reformation. Main idea, Henry VIII created the Anglican Church in England. Because England is an island, ideas from Europe sometimes took longer to get there. Surprisingly, though, English broke away from the Catholic Church earlier than the rest of Europe. That change was based on a political decision by the English king. Later, however, the English people strongly debated the Reformation ideas. King Henry VIII starts his own church. In the history of England, no king is more famous than Henry VIII. He ruled England from 1509 to 1547. He was a stubborn, impatient, and cruel. Henry married six queens, two of which he divorces and two of which he had beheaded. The uh, two, he imprisoned bishops and nobles in the Tower of London for disagreeing with them. They were also eventually beheaded. Henry and his fathers were a member of the Tudor family. In 1540, before the Tudors came to the throne, England's nobles had been at war with each other. Henry was determined to keep the peace and to keep the Tudors on the throne. To do so, he needed a son to succeed him. But Henry had no son. His wife Catherine had given, back, given birth to one surviving daughter. Henry asked the Pope to annul or cancel his marriage to Catherine. An annulment is not the same as a divorce. If the Pope annuls the marriage, it would be as if the marriage had never happened. It would mean that Henry could find a new wife 
to give birth to sons, the sons would be heirs to the throne and not the daughter Catherine had given him. The Pope had annulled marriages before, but this uh, time the Pope refused. Catherine was the daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain. Her nephew was the Holy Roman Emperor. Spain was the strongest Catholic kingdom at the time, and the Pope did not want to make Catherine's family angry. Uh, Henry had, had the Archbishop of Canterbury, the highest bishop in England, annul the marriage. In response, the Pope excommunicated Henry from the church. Henry fought back. In 1534, Parliament passed the Act of Supremacy. This act declared the king, not the Pope, the head of the Church of England. Henry ordered all priests and bishops in England to accept him as the new head of the church. Some refused and were killed. The most famous was Sir Thomas More, who was executed in 1535. Henry then seized the Catholic Church lands in England and gave, him, gave some of it to his nobles. This kept the nobles loyal to the king and the Church of England. If they ever left the Catholic, if they ever let the Catholic Church retain power, mm -hmm. if they ever let the Catholic Church regain power in England, they would have to give up their land. Who was Bloody Mary? The Church of England uh, came to be known as the Anglican Church. It kept most of the rituals and sacraments of the Catholic Church. However, many English Catholics were not satisfied. They wanted to stay Catholic. They, uh, they backed Henry and Catherine's daughter, Mary, when she became Queen Mary I in 1553. Mary had been raised Catholic and wanted to make England a Catholic kingdom again. Mary restored the Catholic Church in England and arrested Protestants who opposed her. In her struggle to make English, England Catholic again, Mary burned 300 people at the stake. The English were horrified and called her, quote, Bloody Mary, unquote. Mary uh, ruled about five years and then died. Her half-sister Elizabeth took the throne, becoming Queen Elizabeth I. Elizabeth was a Protestant. They restored and the Anglican Church and went on to become one of the greatest and she became went on to become one of the greatest rulers in the history of England. How did Calvinism affect England? Although Catholics were defeated, the religious battles were not over. A new fight began to make the Anglican Church more Protestant in its beliefs. In, fifth, in the 1500s, the ideas of John Calvin had reached England. Many educated people read Calvin's works and became convinced that he was right. They began to demand that the Anglican Church give up its Catholic ways of doing things. These refer reformers became known as Puritans because they wanted to purify the Anglican Church of Catholic ideas. Puritans became, uh, began to form their own congregation. These congregations were independent. They made their own decisions uh, what their congregation should do and not do. They did not report to a bishop of the Anglican Church, and they chose their own ministers. Queen England I tolerated Puritans, but when James I became king in 1603, the Puritans faced harder times. James refused to allow anyone to disagree with the Anglican Church. The king headed the, the, king headed the Anglican Church and appointed the leaders. The leaders, in turn, chose priests for the congregation. James believed that by choosing their own ministers, Puritans were challenging the king's power. James and the king who came after him, Charles I, perse persecuted Puritans. They shut down Puritan churches and jailed the Puritan leaders. Many Puritans decided to move to America to practice their religious their religion freely. They founded colonies that eventually became the states of Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. Missionaries go overseas. Main idea. As part of the Counter-Reformation, Catholic kingdoms began sending missionaries overseas to convert people to Christianity. When the Counter-Reformation began, many Catholics became committed to spreading their faith. As part of the new energy and determination, Catholic kingdoms began sending missionaries overseas to America and Asia. The Jesuits were active missionaries in 1500s and 1600s. French and Spanish Jesuits headed to America and Asia. In America, the Native Americans called them the Black Robes. In the first, uh, the first Jesuit missionaries, mm -hmm. the first Jesuit missionary to Japan, Francis Xavier, arrived in 1549. The Japanese at first welcomed the Jesuits, 
By 1600, the Jesuits had converted thousands of Japanese to Christianity. Eventually, Jesuits clashed with the people who believed in Buddhism and, Sh and Shintoism. The Japanese shogun, or military ruler, banned Christianity in Japan and expelled all the missionaries. Spanish missionaries had much greater success in the Philippine Islands. Most of the people eventually, uh, most people there eventually became Catholic. Today, the Philippines is the only Asian country with a Catholic majority. French missionaries tried to convert the people of Vietnam, but were expelled by Vietnam's emperor. Okay, now turning back to biography on page 647, Catherine de' Medici. Catherine de' Medici was an Italian woman who played an important role in French history. She was born to Florence and Lorenzo de' Medici and the, and the Madeleine de la Tour of uh, Avangard, Catholic. Okay, she was born to Florence to Lorenzo de' Medici and Madeleine de Tour of Avangard. Catherine was orphaned as a baby and was raised by her relatives. At 14, Catherine was married to Henry, a French prince. Catherine took Italian artists, musicians, writers, and dancers with her to her French court. She never fully accepted France, however, because she was Italian and was not from a royal family. In 1547, Catherine's husband's be husband became Henry, Catherine's husband became Henry, King Henry II. After he died in a jousting accident in 1559, their oldest son, Francis II, Charles and the ninth and Henry the third succeeded each other as king, their oldest sons rather. So, although Catherine was no longer queen, she had much influence over her sons. Catherine is blamed for many conflicts between the French Catholic and French Protestants called the Huguenots. In 1568, she outlawed freedom of worship. In 1572, Catherine arranged the murder of a Huguenot advisor. His death sparked the St. Bartholomew's massacre, which resulted in the death of about six thousand Huguenots. Catherine was not always opposed to the Huguenots. In fact, she arranged the marriage of her daughter, Margaret, to Henry of Navarre, a former Protestant Huguenot who became King Henry IV of France. Views on Catherine's accomplishments are mixed. Some blame her entirely for the French religious wars. Others remember her efforts to protect her sons. Still others remember her as a Renaissance woman who became a supporter of the arts added to the rural library and sponsored dance and theater pageants that are considered to be the uh, what that is considered to be the first ballet. Catherine died in 1589 of pneumonia. Then and now, if Catherine Medici were running for political office today, do you think she'd be a popular candidate? Why or why not? And so finally on 644, I'm going to read primary source uh, Ignatius and Christianity. Ignatius of Loyola became devoted to the Christian religion while recovering from an injury. Quote, in everything else, if, <clears throat> in everything else was healthy except he could not stand easily on his leg and had to stay in bed as he was given much to reading. <clears throat> when he felt better, he was asked, uh, he was asked to be given some of the books to pass the time. But in that house, none of those, um, but in that house, none of those he usually read could be found. So they gave him a life of Christ and a book of, of lives of the saints in Spanish. He read them over, uh, he read them over many times, and he became rather fond of what was written there. The autobiography of Saint Ignatius Loyola, uh, Joseph F. O'Colligan, translating. Okay.